welcome, welcome to the live stream. This is my workshop behind me here. And this is the first time that I've ever done a live stream from my workshop. And, um, you know, it was a conversation yesterday we had when we were uh, on a live chat at the uh, Fandom Forum. And we just thought, you know, let's, let's, ha let's have a conversation and let's uh, do some stuff in my workshop. So hopefully this will be a good experience. It'll be new, it'll be different. You have to bear with me because I've never tried <laughs> Kind of music is playing. I certainly did. crazy. YouTube went mental. I think it was playing a video in the background even though I was live. Anyway, hello! <laughs> Sometimes YouTube is a bit glitchy when you try and stream from your phone. Can you hear me now? Uh, folk, folks in the chat, let me know if you can hear me now. <laughs> um, uh, just hit the heart button if you can hear me and, and everything's now working. If it's not, then I might have to start the stream again. Um, but yeah, the intention of this stream is for us to uh, yes, thank you, Gavin. I appreciate you responding. Um, so yeah, so the purpose of this is that we're gonna gonna do some stuff in in the workshop. Um, uh, behind me, you will see uh, I'm working on a proton pack. So this here is a 3D print uh, model of a proton pack. Um, it's you know fairly close as a shell to completion, um, and um, this is what it looks like all messy at the back. <laughs> because each of these pieces, my printer isn't big enough, obviously, to print this as one piece, and most people's printers aren't. And so um, what you have to do is create it in separate pieces, like this, like the bits that you see here, um, and then you screw them together, and you can probably see these screw-on points here, other screw points here, um, and on the inside as well. And uh, then uh, you put all those pieces together and there's quite a lot of sanding and other things that have been done, but this has been finished um, with a, a couple of things, a couple of different spray paints. So obviously it's been colored, um, but it's also been finished with flat, uh, with a um, truck bed liner. So in fact, I have that right here. So yeah, this is the kind of thing that you use to create the, uh, the truck bed liner gives it this, I don't know if you can see if I get close enough, there's this kind of, you know, mottled effect to the truck bed liner when the light shines on it. Um, and so that creates a, a more realistic finish. It also helps to kind of take away some of the imperfections because when you 3D print, and you can see in a couple of spots, uh, some 3D print issues, um, you know, you get striations and lines and other things when you 3D print. So yeah, this is, uh, this is what I've been doing. And you'll also notice that I finished different parts in different ways. So this has that kind of mottled 3D, sorry, uh, flatbed liner effect. And then these pipes here, I've made those smooth, which is a much tougher thing to do. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Hi folks and chat, Gavin, hello. Cameron, hello. Alfie, hello. Alfie has a question, ask you a question, Alfie. Um, and then in a sec, we're gonna get on with trying to do some actual build build work here. Um, and there's a few things I'm trying to do today. So um, my hope is that I can make some progress on this 
while you guys are are watching and um, we'll see what we need to do. Thanks, Ghostbusters fan. Yeah, um, it's getting there. <laughs> it's getting there. And and um, as anyone knows, there's a lot of there's a lot to putting this together. So really, this is just the shell. But over here behind me, I also have. Uh, let's move this trap. This is if we get onto this. I've got some work to do on this trap. This is a smoking trap that I built. Um, but yeah, we um, uh, have. The electronics are here for the pack behind me. Um, and so this is a kit that you can buy online. Um, it's just a nine volt battery, um, a switch. This is the lighting array. So if you remember on the back of the pack, there is that um, bar chart that goes up and down. Uh, and then you've got these four lights here, uh, which are gonna be the lights that go in the windows. And so when you kind of flip this switch, you get the, how bright is that? <laughs> it's very bright. But that's what goes in the, um, in, in the pack to show the bar chart. And then this is for the, the cyclotron. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is the whole thing that's going on here. <laughs> that's crazy. So what questions are we asking here? Uh, uh, Gavin's asking, is it gonna be um, an afterlife pack or an 84 pack? This is a really good question. So I'm kind of of the Adam Savage school of, of building stuff. I'm kind of making it my own. So I think it will be somewhere between the 84 and the afterlife. I like that patinaed used look um, that uh, you kind of get from doing that kind of stuff. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that um, I can kind of make, make somewhere between the two, somewhere between the two. I'm just gonna stop this for a second and otherwise it's going to keep following me around um so yeah so what i've got to do is i've got to get these electronics and i've got to make them fit into the pack that's the plan anyway <laughs> right now um and so there's a little bit of work to do to i need to cut these these pieces out here so this is still left over from the printing work so i'm gonna have to carefully cut around here and then um there's also these rings that need to be stuck into here as well. So they go in there to kind of finish off the look of the pack. So yeah, I got just, a, you know, just a few things to do on the pack today. So I'll take a few questions. If anyone's got questions about building a pack, and I don't profess to be an expert, this is the first pack that I've built, um, but I do enjoy building props and other things. So um, let's see what people are saying. Um, Ghostbusters fan says, uh, yeah, have that kit in my 80% size spirit pack. That's cool. Uh, what else are people saying? Sorry, chat's going up. Are you going to call Ghostbusters? That's right, Sphere. You are going to call the Ghostbusters. Um, Alfie's like saying, can we make Ray's, Ray's goggles? I actually have uh, the spirit version of Ray's goggles, and I do plan to do a mod on those. So that might be a future video. Justin is saying, did you see any cool packs at the Frozen Empire screening? Yeah, I did. I, loads of people had packs. I saw a lot of the Afterlife um, Proton packs that were part of the build uh, that Hasbro did. So the HasLab packs, a lot of people had those. And then people had some of their own packs. There were a mix. I saw some 3D printed packs like this one. Um, and then I did see um, some packs that were obviously from uh, a mold. So there's a bunch of those that come from moldings that you'll see out there, um, out and about, um, that are taken, some of them, from um, a molding of an original pack. And so you can get that, uh, that type of a body. So I saw a whole range, and then I saw people that had modded spirit packs, I saw people that had modded uh, uh, the two-thirds side spirit pack. So yes, yeah, loads, and lots of cool, cool things. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, so Trey, uh, the, sorry, the Parker Taker uh, is saying, uh, do I have a Hasbro pack? I don't, um, but I've played with the Hasbro pack. I have a buddy that has a Hasbro pack and I had one here when we did our Ghostbusters experience here. Um, we had a couple of Hasbro packs. Yeah, I like them, they're, they're fun. Um, Mo Pips is saying that they recently built a pair of Ecto goggles. Now I'm going to be looking at the whole costume. Really looking forward to starting my 3D printed pack soon. Cool, good, good for you, man. And I will be putting out a, an entire video on building this eventually. So uh, right now, this is just, we're gonna chat about this and I'm gonna do a bit of work live. Um, but I will be putting a whole video together about the whole process from printing to finishing. Uh, so yeah, 
Um, let's see. Uh, what about the Frozen Empire pack? Yeah, so this isn't designed, as you can see, this is the, the traditional bumper um, and the traditional bellows here on the back of the pack. So I will, uh, at some point, I'm interested in trying to put together um, a Frozen Empire pack. It's not very, very far from the mods that were made to the, um, to the Afterlife pack. There were quite a lot of mods made to that, particularly wiring down here and the spindles and things. Um, and then obviously they changed out the bumper Changing the bumper on this thing, very easy to do. So there is a 3D printed version of this bumper that you can change for the Frozen Empire one that has the piece that comes out over here and attaches at the bottom. And then there's a mod to enable you to take this side panel here with this uh, strafing and change it to the, the lines in the Frozen Empire pack, which has the kind of yellow and black striping on it. So all of that stuff's um, available online. Um, would I add anything from my own imagination to the pack? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'll give it a bit of my own look and feel. I don't want it to stray too far from somewhere between the 84 and the Afterlife pack, but I'm definitely going to give it a little bit of my own, uh, my own look and feel. Uh, Ghostbusters fan is saying, quick question, will you be at Ghostbusters Firehouse on GBD? I will be there on Ghostbusters Day, I will, with a pack on. It might not be this one, it might be my, uh, my other pack, which I can show you. If you're interested in seeing my modded spirit pack, I'm happy to show that to you guys. Uh, Alfie's a big fan of the Ecto-1 and Ghostbusters. Yes, me too. Uh, Trend Aiden, hey Trend. Uh, is the Proton Pack heavy like the actual prop? So right now, at the moment, this isn't heavy, but when you get all the parts together, it's going to become heavy. Yes, much heavier than it is now. Uh, yeah, and I will add the leads to it. Um, the pack shell, so if you search online uh, for, there's one called the, the Taka Belly Shell. <laughs> um, it's a really, really good uh, model uh, for making this. So if you're planning to do that, I suggest you look, there's a great Facebook page called uh, 3D Printed Ghostbusters Props. And it's a really great forum where you can get lots of advice and information on how to build your own proton pack and how to, to kind of make it uh, your own. So, yeah, uh, you know, uh, there's, lots, there's lots of great advice out there. If you go to gbfans.com, you can buy all the bits and pieces you need to make your pack. So, yeah, it's, it's fun. Uh, Gavin saying, uh, are you going to add the smoke machine like Adam? Oh, yes, I am. Now, Adam added the smoke machine up here, so it vented out of this pipe. But I'm going to add the smoke coming out of here. So the idea is that when the pack overloads, it will vent out of these. And right now, they're just hollow, as you can see. But um, I'll be able to put the smoke machine, you can see my fingers through this. I'll be able to put the smoke machine in this part. And actually, I have a buddy that lives not far from me that makes smoke machine pieces, um, him and his friend, uh, for uh, packs. And in fact, I got, the, um, I got the ribbon cable, a really great ribbon cable, um, for, for this, an original Ghostbusters 84 ribbon cable um, that enables you to, um, you know, make it look perfect, really. So, yeah, I'm going to put the smoke machine in. Um, <clears throat> I am going to use, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry about that. I am going to use uh, the Spengler Neutrino Wand as the companion to this. Although I am making a Neutrino Wand as well, uh, but that wand is going to be um, more... Uh, more like the, the arm thrower. I'm modding uh, some 3D models to do the arm thrower, so yeah. So if you have any questions about building your own pack um, or about what I'm about to start doing, just let me know in the chat and I'll try and answer them uh, for you. Um, Alfie said they've got a proton pack and Trend Aiden is saying, uh, looks like a great replica, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying. It'll get closer the closer I get. There's a lot to do. I mean, you're seeing it in the raw here. It's really just been painted um, and I'm start and, and put together, and now I'm starting to work on the detail. Uh, let's see, uh, Gavin, uh, did I change the, the the cable on my spirit pack? I did not actually change it, um, but I do have a more accurate one that I could change it to. Uh, Mo Phipps, hi. Uh, still don't know if I'll do a mechanical cyclotron. Yeah, that would be cool, like the afterlife prop or a basic one where you can take the cover off and have the inside, kind of like Adam Savage, yeah. 
I think that I think those two options are good. Um, and just so you know, I do plan on doing a live stream like this, but with Ben Eady, who was the prop master on Ghostbusters um, Afterlife. So if you're interested in making your own cyclotron like they did in the movie that's actually spinning, um, you know, if you're not already uh, subscribed, subscribe to the channel. That video will be coming soon, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I've got to organize it with, uh, with Ben. But he'll be able to give all sorts of advice about how to deal with all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, Snedler, hello. Uh, yes, great to be here on your life. Thank you. I did see your comments on my other video, and I just haven't got around to responding to them. But thank you for watching the live after it happened. Welcome. Uh, the park taker. Uh, are you going to make a ghost trap? Well, actually, I have a ghost trap here uh, that I have been working on. So this is the ghost trap, and what you'll see here is that the mod. This is a so this is a spirit trap, a spirit Halloween trap. Um, and I have got the basic trap uh, that I that, that without the changes on it that that you can look at. I might grab that later. Um, but what you'll see I've done here is I've added this panel to the back of the spirit trap and obviously this connector, which the spirit trap doesn't have. And then this top panel, if you can see it here, uh, with the switch um, and then a new light. Um, so this is all the spirit trap. And then the other big change is the top here. So if you can see this, this is the, um, the bar chart and the end light, and again, this is still using all of the spirit stuff that was, this is all their lighting and everything that came with, with the original piece, but I've updated the switch, changed it, updated this, and kind of made these pieces. What I haven't done to this uh, trap yet is done any aging on it, even this piece is added. So actually these were all laser cut pieces, um, and then those laser cut pieces were put in position and screwed in, to make this more like a screen accurate trap. And again, I, if you're interested in seeing how I did that piece, I have another trap that's identical to, this is actually a smoking trap. So it looks a bit of a mess inside at the moment, but this is a smoking unit that I put inside it. Um, the other trap I did, I made the doors automatically open and close. So if you're interested in seeing that video and you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe here and you'll find uh, there's a whole video called From Toy to Prop. Um, about the changes I made to this, and I walk through everything that I did to to provide those changes and alternate options for things. Oops, try not to drop the trap on the floor while I'm out of shot. Let's see, what are the questions we've got here? Um, okay, sorry, I'm just gonna roll back here um, and make sure I haven't missed anybody's questions. Um, the Soul of the Mind, I haven't heard of the Phoenix pack, and welcome back, the Soul of the Mind, nice to see you. Um, Ghostbusters, tell me, tell me about it in chat. Uh, Ghostbusters fan is saying um, that they have a full-size spirit pack customized to look like the Frozen Empire pack. With all the upgrades from that film, the only thing I need on it is to add a light kit to the wand. That is cool. Let me show you, while we're talking about that, I'll be right back. I can show you, my, this is my spirit pack. It's a bit of a, let's see if I can untangle this mess here. <laughs> So um, I very, very quickly had to mod this pack for Halloween. And so what I did was, um, yeah, this is the spirit pack. And so the, mainly the mods I've done is, is just making it look a little bit more bashed up. So you can see I've added little things like this and then the patina and the changes. I put tape around the wand here and here. So just tried to make it look a little bit more bashed up. Um, but I really actually really like the spirit pack this this version the only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that this the bumper is not hollowed out and there's a very straight edge here on this bit that's the only bit I don't like about it but other than that it's a really great shell for a pack and what I actually want to do is try and add um, an Alice frame to the back of it I mean on its own it's still a great pack as it is um, and there's a couple other things. I mean, like the, the clipart valve here is way too tall, but you know, it's a very good, very good replica. Um, Cameron's asking, would I make a PKE, to me Ugh, PKE meter? Yes, I would. I would love to do that. Um, and this is the modded version of the toy. Yes, uh, they even use the toy as a prop in Afterlife. They did. So the, the toy that they used in Afterlife was actually, and by the way, someone was asking about weight. 
with the wand. This is really light, this pack, but this is way heavier than the one I was just holding, the 3D printed version, because it has all the electrics in it, the padding and the straps. And, and if you add an Alice frame, which I have down there to it, it's gonna be <laughs> even heavier. Um, so yeah, um, and uh, Sneedler saying, yes, I will make all the gadgets, you're right. <laughs> that will be my attempt. Uh, yes, let's see, what else are people saying? Uh, Alfie, this first time, first live stream ever, that's cool. Hey, well, welcome, and I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Uh, let's see, um, Gavin is saying, I played Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed last night, and it had a great update. It had Garaka and the firehouse and the ice going down the middle and the ice on the side, so that's very, very cool. Uh, and people welcoming, welcoming Alfie in the chat. Thanks for that, folks. Uh, Mo Phipps is saying, I'll probably build uh, Sean Charlesworth's amazing ghost trap. It's a bit expensive to make, but the price is similar to modifying the spirit one because the stuff isn't available here in Europe. Yeah, and I don't know, can you get the spirit trap in Europe or is there a, is there a similar build to that? I'd love to know more about that. Um... Have I met any, the Parker Taker is saying, have I met any Indiana Ghostbusters yet? I might have. I, I, I met so many Ghostbusters at the, um, so many Ghostbusters at, at the Frozen Empire premiere that, um, yeah, I may have done and I may have forgotten. <laughs> it's, uh, so let's see, what else are people saying? Uh, late 2023, uh, oh, sorry, Ghostbusters fan is saying, oh, you have... Uh, to look at the Phoenix pack. It's one of the best packs I've seen. Okay, I'll, I'll have to check that out. Uh, Trend Aiden, uh, late 2023, early 2024. I did get my hands on the Lego Ideas Ecto-1 set from 2014. Should be awesome to get. Um, uh, okay, yeah, the minifigure scale set with Frozen Empire and the Gunner set. That, that would be very, very cool. Very, very cool. The Solar Mind is saying the Phoenix pack was the build of the video game pack and it was the most accurate TVG pack out there because when it uh, vented, it would just vent like the game with the bumper popping up. That's cool. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, okay, Cameron, would you want to make the Ecto goggles? Yeah, I would like to. I have a pair that I'm probably going to mod. Ghostbusters fan is saying, yeah, I put an Alice frame on my full-size spirit pack and it makes it a lot better. I'm going to have to try that out. Tell me more about what mods you made to it. Uh, the V-clip broke on that pack. That has happened. There's a couple of... There, there are a few weaknesses on that pack, I have to say, um, that um, I have encountered from time to time. Um, if I just put it up here. The the things that are weaknesses on this pack is here, the ion arm. And this, and this bit always gets... Uh, this has already been broken, but I kind of... I glued it and then patched it and then sanded it to kind of give it a afterlife vibe. <laughs> um... And then the other thing is where the is where the gun goes on. And part of the problem with this is that, as you can see, see how straight that is. In reality, what you really want is that the this should be at an angle like sorry, an angle like this. No, like this. Sorry. So it's easier to get it off the pack because um, it is actually difficult to pull this thing off when it's in a straight line. This is origin originally and correct for eighty four. Um, but in Ghostbusters 2, they put the, the thrower on at an angle. Cameron, I did not meet Sigourney Weaver. She was not at the premiere. And I haven't met her in any other capacity. I'd love to, though. I mean, what an amazing actress and been in so many things I love. Ghostbusters fan is saying, yes, a spirit trap PKE were made available here, but under a different company and only through their website. Can't remember the company's name, unfortunately. Okay. And uh, Snedler, I don't know about you, but can you get the trap... Um, if you can get the trap in Denmark. Yeah, I don't know. It is harder to get some of this stuff in Europe, for sure. Um, uh, oh, Parker, take it as an Indiana Ghostbusters. Well, I've met one of you then, at, at the very least. <laughs> um, uh, and Sneedler's gonna find out. And Mo Phipps is saying, yes, Halloween costumes, which sells a similar trap to Spirit, probably also made by Rubies, sells it in the US and Europe. Um, it's way more difficult to get a PKE meter, so I'll have to build a custom. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? It's it's funny how some of these things just don't make it um, over to to Europe. And then there's so many fans in Europe. Um, 
And I think that's why, I mean, I don't know if you've met, seen any of the German Ghostbusters, um, but they have made some incredible things themselves with 3D printing. But that's my love, why I love 3D printing, because you can make any of this stuff now yourself at home. You just need to buy the model <clears throat> and then you're good to go. Um, okay. Uh, Cameron's saying, would I want to meet Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson and Bill Murray? I have actually been in the presence of all those gentlemen at the premiere, which was pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, my thoughts on the Ghostbusters AMC trap. Yeah, I think a couple of the traps they bought out that were part of the, um, part of the, the movie kind of, uh, the accompanying movie merchandise were pretty good. They were all different to each other, but, <coughs> excuse me, but they were pretty good. So yeah, I think, um, you know, if you can find, still find an AMC trap um, or a Cinemark trap, go for it. Um, because, uh, I mean, the great thing is if you're, if you're beginning at something and you want to make a mod uh, like this, then, you know, finding... Finding something that is a good starting point is much easier than going from zero, especially if you don't have a 3D printer. But the crazy thing is 3D printers are becoming so cheap now. It's kind of crazy to me. You can get a good 3D printer for like $150 and then filament is like 12 bucks, nine to 12 bucks. And then you can just start printing anything. Um, and most, most everyone has a computer in some form that they can use to drive the printer, so yeah. Um, oh, is it the Regal Cinema Ghost Trap? Yeah, I mean, I think I somebody did a good review where they compared both of those together, and I think that was interesting to see the differences between them. They both have different pros and cons. I think one has a kind of automatic opener, the other doesn't. You have to open it yourself. Um, so it really just depends on kind of what you're, uh, what you're looking for. Gavin, um, I want to add a weathering or metal chipping to the trap. So let's talk about that for a second, because I know there was a conversation yesterday on the live about weathering. Um, so let me show you, let me show you this. So this is the ion arm of this pack that I'm working on. And I started doing some weathering of this. So this is a, just remember, this is a 3D print. Um, and uh, with this 3D print, I, I obviously sanded it. Um, tried to fill in the, the striations and the lines on it. Uh, and then it's had um, a couple of spray paints as well. And then what you see here for this weathering right now, and this is not finished by the way, all of this, so let me just see if I can get as close as I can. You see on the resistors, there's weathering. There's weathering here, the idea being that it's kind of been turning and, and looking around. Um, and then on the back here as well, kind of weathering where the pipe's gonna go through on this resistor. And you'll even see that there's weathering on the top of these screws, okay? So um, this was all done with a pen, all of it. And I'll show you the pen. Um, it was just done with a pen like this. So if you wanna do very quick uh, kind of work, this is a Sharpie, um, it's one of those Hi Sophia, hey there, hi Alfie, welcome back. But it's just one of these, just one of these regular pens and that you can use for, you know, writing silver writing on, on black surfaces. And then the process I typically follow is I'll just put a dab of that on the corner of something and then I'll rub it with my finger um, to spread it. Because what you don't want it to do is look like a pen. So you can apply it with this, which is a very quick way to do it, and then just spread it round with your finger. So that. That's often the way that I go about doing that. The, the one thing you have to remember is if you're taking a trap like this, which right now, if you look at this plastic here, this is very smooth at the moment. Um, and you know, there's, you, you could put the pen directly on this, but what you really want to do is just do a very, you know, if you're not gonna repaint the whole trap and you wanna leave it looking like this, but make it look uh, a little bit old, you can just scuff the edges with sanding. So um, I take like a sanding block, like one of these, and then, in fact, I can show you on the corner of this because I'm gonna do this with this trap anyway. So I'll show you how I go about this. So I would take this piece here and I would just start to sand these corners, these little bits, right? 
because we don't want it to look like shiny plastic anymore. I'm not going to I'm not going to sand it very heavily, just a little bit. And then if you dust that off, you'll see now there's already a, a kind of patinaed look to that and it looks like it's had some some damage on the side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pen and then I'm just going to put a little bit a little bit of um, pen along the edge here in the areas where I think this would look the most scuffed. And then I'm just going to scuff it with my finger a bit like that. And then you see, then you've got that scuffed up look going on there. And, you know, if you really don't like what you've done, you can always go over it again or you can sand it down again and start again. And that's, you know, very quickly. So if you compare that to then this side, which still looks like a toy, um, that's a big difference and you've done it in just a, a few seconds. So it's a very, very quick way. And it's not the only way to do it, but, but it's a way that I've discovered works pretty well and gives a particular look. And it's pretty simple and pretty quick to do. And then the same thing here, you see where all these raised screws are here and here, Again, what I'd probably do is I'd come in here and in the areas where you think that they're going to get some, some damage and some use, I would just put a bit of pen again on them to create that look that they've been scuffed. Again, see that? Um, and again, that, that's maybe a little bit too much, so I might go in and just, you know, and the great thing with this pen is you've got a few minutes, you do get a very silver finger. <laughs> but you've got a few minutes or a few seconds, I should say, just to just dull that down and uh, and make it look more realistic. And that's and that's pretty much how I how I go through the process of making that stuff look look old and like it's been been damaged. So yeah, um, let's see. Uh, the Parker Taker said they made a DOI Garaka orb. That's very very cool. Um, so. Uh, let's see, um, Sneedler's saying, yeah, it works pretty great. It does. It's very simple and it does work really well. Um, uh, let's see, Gavin's saying, um, uh, they, that he wants to do it with his PKE meter. So yeah, um, like I said, I mean, again, if you look on the pack, I was just playing around with this here, but even this, this silver section here uh, of this piece was done with one of those pens. Um, and the same with these little bits here. And again, this is far from perfect. And then this is a combination. So actually this piece was printed with silver. Then I did it a rough spraying with um, bed liner, just a very rough spraying to get in those gaps. And then I sanded this down again, and then I put a little bit of pen around it. So the idea being is that it lo it's looking aged. And again, there's still more process to go to make it look older and more aged, um, but, that's that's pretty much it, <clears throat> he says, with um, <coughs> a frog in his throat. So, um, yeah. So if you've got any other questions about that process or about the kind of way that I go about doing that, well, let me know. Um, yeah, and if there's anything else you kind of want to see, um, uh, you know, about the process I go through for building these packs, again, let me know. And I'm happy to... Um, talk through it a little bit um, and uh, help you with that. Uh, Alfie's saying I've got a mini ghost trap. Um, oh, Justin's saying, how am I getting the wand? So actually, I'm going to use the Has HasLab Spengler wand with this pack, which means in part that I don't have to put um, a sound chip in here if I don't want to. I've just got the electronics, which are over here, that I'm going to put into the pack. Um, and then I'm going to use the wand uh, on the end of a hose. I've got a bunch of hose over there. And the Hasbro wand has a different connector, so you can either connect the, the it to, have, have it connected to nothing and just kind of working as it is, um, or you can have it uh, connected to, um, to an actual uh, pipe. Gosh, I wish I could speak properly today. It would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, uh, need more dead tyrants. Uh, what have you got to deal with I don't even know what you're talking about there. Uh, 
Um, Sneedler, are you uh, putting in a rechargeable battery? That's a good question. Um, I don't know yet. Probably I'll just stick with the nine volt battery for now and then I might upgrade to a rechargeable battery and create a port where I can plug it in and charge it. The only thing with, with charging is if you're out and about on the street with your pack, or you're out doing something and you need to charge it, that can be more awkward than just carrying some spare batteries. It just depends on kind of how you go, how you go about it. Um, Gavin Heinemann, uh, saw a video where someone was doing weathering uh, and used hot glue and painted it silver first, then glued it in some places and made it black. It looked really good. Yeah, that's a great technique especially if you want to create fake welding. So in spots like this, I'm going to use that process with a hot glue gun around here. Um, and similarly, I'm going to use that process here to make these look like the ends of these pipes have been welded on. That's the plan uh, with those. So yeah, using hot glue um, and then kind of putting little dabs of it in the positions that make it look like a weld is a really, really great way uh, to, to create realistic looking welding. It's a really good, uh, really good technique. Um, Pips, I think I'll use uh, the Spengler wand. Uh, so all the pack electrics are just in a simple Arduino programming and I have the nice barrel action. Yeah, I agree. And the, the, the um, Spengler wand is really, really good. It's um, really well priced. For the price of buying that Spengler wand, again, here in the US at least, it's around $150. And by the time you built that yourself, Unless what you really want to do is build it. And that's partly this, right? I, I bought the spirit pipe, but I really wanted to build this myself. That was the plan. That was the idea. So, yeah, I, I, um, I think buying the Neutrona wand and doing that exact thing, which is what I just, uh, you just said, is exactly what I'm doing, what I would recommend. So, yeah. Um, aspect, welcome. Wowzers, yes. Wowzers, indeed. Uh... Cameron's asking me if I want to meet Margot Robbie. Sure. I'm always interested in meeting uh, folks that worked on movies and, and finding out more about their, their approach to their, their work. Um, the Parker Taker is working on a Ghostbusters movie, hopefully with Jason and Gil, and based in Indiana. Wow, that sounds awesome. Um, Alfie's saying, who are you going to call when your house is haunted? Me. I don't need to call anyone. I've got a proton pack. <laughs> so I shouldn't call anyone. Uh, Jacob saying that looks sick. Thank you, Jacob. That's very cool. Um, let's see what else. Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. How are you doing? Aspect saying it looks amazing. Thank you. Justin is saying, what about um, the grain elevator? Okay, I'm confused about that. You'll have to tell me uh, more what you mean by that. Stephanie saying it looks cool. Thank you. Uh, Skelton, hello. Welcome back. Um... Let's see, Alfie. Uh, Alfie has a joke. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, Mopips, uh, yes, in Europe, it's um, okay. Uh, 155 euros with tax. I think I would pay more for an electronics kit. I think you're right. And sometimes when you buy these electronics kits from various places, they're expensive to ship. So it's not... Like, I bought um, my smoking uh, pack from Europe for this. Um, and it costs quite a lot in shipping from Etsy. So sometimes getting the toy and then modding the toy is a really great way to go. And there's no shame in that. I think that's a really great way to approach doing any kind of work like this. Um, let's see, what else are people saying? Oh, uh, Miravines, best pack I've ever seen. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Sophia, hi, Sophia. Gavin, Justin, is that supposed to be a grain elevator from Afterlife? Oh, maybe that's what maybe that's what um, we mean here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, so any other questions you have about building your own proton pack, three D printing it, painting it, uh, modding it, um, and doing all those other things, let me let me know. I'm happy to answer those questions for you. Sophia, what else do I have? You mean here? Um, so I've got this. Let me just put this here. The problem with laying anything on the back is I always put things in the background and then they fall over. It's what happens. So the other thing I was showing earlier was the trap. So this is actually a Spirit Halloween trap that I've been doing some modding on. So as you can see, I've added these plates and other pieces, and I was just showing live earlier the process of how you go through creating this patina to make it look more, uh, more realistic. So this side you see here, it looks kind of worn and scratched. And then when you turn it around here, this is the original plastic. So the idea here is to 
without having to completely respray the track. Because not everybody can can do that or has access to that or is you know even talented with spray painting. It's a whole thing. And if you're going to spray paint this toy, you need to sand it. Then you're going to need to prime it. Then you're going to need to paint it again. And that's fine, by the way. And I, I'm up for that. And I'll probably do that to one of these in the future because I would prefer this panel to be silver rather than white like it is in the movies because this is actually a piece of uh, aluminium or aluminum if you're from America. Um, but then um, if you want to do a quick mod and you don't want to have to do all that, that stuff, this, this process of doing a light sanding and then adding this silver is a very, very quick way to make this look more realistic and to make it look like it's made, made of metal. Gavin's saying, uh, are you going to add a switch like the Afterlife pack? Oh, that is a great question. I am, and I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. In fact, um, this is my the work that I've been doing for the switch for the Afterlife pack. So this is just a standard switch. Um, and uh, the Valeri brothers did this uh, 3D print. So this is the piece for the Afterlife pack. And then this is the switch for the Afterlife pack. See that there? So that's what the Afterlife pack switch looks like. Obviously, I need to spray paint this red and I need to do some finishing on this. And the idea is you take this switch mechanism, you swap it out for this content. And if you if you follow their Instagram, Valeri Brothers, um, uh, Scaleri Brothers, sorry, uh, they do a lot of really great stuff for modding your packs. And you can use this mod also for, um, well, for any packs, in fact. But yeah, this is what I'm going to do to add the switch. And the challenge is, and I had this a second ago, the switch for this pack has to go here. <laughs> so this is the ion arm. Hang on. Yeah, that's the right way around. <laughs> the ion arm, and then the switch sits here underneath. And so, as you can see, there's not a lot of space in here. And um, you'll remember that um, if you watched any of the videos with Adam Savage and Ben Eady, Ben talks about, and Adam talks about, the challenge of actually getting content in here. And that's why I haven't fixed this piece onto my pack yet. You'll see this diagonal line here. <laughs> this is for where I'm going to cut the hole to allow the electronics to go through that um, and connect to this. So that's the plan. And um, earlier I was showing this, but um, this is the electronics kit that I've got uh, for this. So um, I have the, the bar chart, and this is bright. Look at this. <laughs> that's crazy. That's the bar chart that's going to go in this section here in the power pack. Um, and then this is the switch that currently sits with it, but that's going to be replaced. And then um, here, uh, these are the lights that are going to go into um, the uh, cyclotron. And so that's what I've been working on recently. Let me just check the questions, because there's loads of questions and I'm missing them. Uh, let me roll back. Sorry about this, folks. I'm going to try and get to you all. Um, so yeah, that was the answer to the afterlife pack switch. Stephanie's saying, I was going to New York City for Ghostbusters Day, but got hired to cover a birthday during the hours. I'm so sorry. Um, hopefully you'll be able to catch some of it. Um, uh, okay. And Aspect saying Ghostbusters uh, makes you very excited, I think that emoji is, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, Sneeta saying, love his geeky workshop. I would feel like a kid in there. Hey, I, I, it's taken me a long time to put this together. Um, and if you want to look more at what's in my workshop, I'll happily give you a guided tour of some of the stuff that I use and how I've laid it out. But I'm starting to get, uh, if you watch any of Adam Savage's videos and he's talking about his cave and talking about the space that he has, I totally agree with him. It's an ever evolving experience when you're trying to create space to work in. Where do I want things to be put? Where do I want them to be? So, um, so that's the process that I'm in all the time. Uh, right, let's see. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, and Sophia saying, hi. Aspect saying, can you count how many games you've ever played in your life? <laughs> um, I'll have to think about that in the back of my head. That's a lot, uh, probably a lot. I've played a lot of games, depending if you're talking about video games or, <laughs> or other kinds of games. Um, should have, make your own belt gizmo or containment unit. Oh, I would love to make a containment unit. And if you've seen any of the videos of me riding with uh, Ecto-1 and J, that car has a containment unit in the back of it. It's actually an Ecto-1 with a containment unit built in, which is fantastic. Um, 
Mo is saying, are you also adding the second switch from the Afterlife pack? I recently discovered it has two. It does have two, and I have thought about adding it. The second one is under here, and I may have left it too late, because if you think about, if you look at where this is now, <laughs> trying to get something in here with all of this around here is gonna be quite challenging. I could probably do it, um, but I'd have to cut it out at the back. I'd probably have to use a Dremel to create that space for it. Um, but it's definitely it's definitely possible uh, to try and do that. So yeah, I, I, I have definitely thought about doing it. Um, Gavin's saying they've added Spirits Unleashed in the Frozen Empire pack, they have. Uh, Sneedler's saying, um, what did you think about the multiple setting packs from Ghostbusters the video game? Yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, the other cool thing about the Spengler wand is that you can change the setting on that wand by pressing a button. And it does various things from the game, like changes into a slime blower and, uh, you know, does certain other types of firing. So, yeah, I think it's, think it's cool. Um, McClassical is saying, uh, welcome, by the way. Uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Classical, working on a Q-Pack at the moment. Uh, are electronics better instead of the shell? Or on the motherboard? That is a really good question. So, um, this is this is my motherboard at the moment. I haven't gone with aluminum or aluminium. Um, I've gone with a, uh, this is a piece of ply, but it's very strong. It's not bending or going anywhere. It's very tough. Uh, and I put, you can see the, the clips on here. And anyone, by the way, that wonders motherboard, what are they talking about? Building a computer? Um, the motherboard is basically the piece that sits on the back. So if I take this pack, I'm going to place this in position, um, you see it takes on a slightly different look because the silhouette changes slightly because the motherboard's on it. And the motherboard sits on here, and then you put your Alice rig, which is the uh, Alice stand, which is ba basically the backpack piece of this, fits on here. And then sometimes you have an access panel here to change the batteries and other things when you're putting a pack together. And I, I realize I haven't cut that. I need to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, with regards to the electronics, I was literally, and let me see if I can find this right now, I, maybe I left it somewhere, right, so, um, I was doing a 3D printing test today for the very purpose of trying to answer that question for myself. So, on the back here of the pack, I'm going to have to cut out um, these spaces for the lights, and my plan is to put this piece in here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but to put that piece basically in here and then uh, put the light inside of that um, so that it shines through. So my plan right now is to mount the electronics in the shell. That's my plan. And then to have access to the electronics through like a, a hatch where I can put a battery pack because um, I'm going to need to change out that battery and, and various other things. So that's my plan, at least at the moment. And the idea currently, just so you kind of understand my thinking, and I actually haven't tested this yet, so I don't even know if <laughs> this is going to work, but I wasn't a fan of the fact that there's, see there's multiple lights here, and I don't want to see this little, what looks like a die, or a dice, <laughs> on here. So I designed this to fit inside here, and the idea is, I mean, I'm not sure it's entirely working, but the idea is that you'll get one light, and this is was just an early print, and that's got a slightly messy space there but the idea is that this would go as you see inside there and be mounted and then that would fit on the pack and then that's what you'd see and it would create a single spot of light that was my plan and so i, I need to play with that and actually I'm, I'm 3d printing another one of these at the moment this is a little bit uh too flexible so it's not going to be durable enough but that was my plan hopefully that tells you my perspective on it anyway um let's see Miravines is saying, how many ghosts have you caught in your van? <laughs> uh, many, many ghosts. Uh, many ghosts. In fact, I'm running out of space in my containment unit. Um, uh, park, uh, park Taker saying, who are you going to call Ghostbusters of Indiana in 2025 or 2026? Uh, there's 118 people watching. There were earlier, yes. And we think we've got 96 right now. That's awesome. And welcome, everybody. I should say, if you're new here and you're like, who is this crazy guy in his workshop building something? This is the experience, experi I can't even say it. <laughs> this is the Experience Explorers channel. And um, what we're doing today is this is the first time I've ever done a live stream for my workshop, but we explore experiences like movie sets or real life experiences. 
and I make videos about those things. And then I come back and I try and replicate them here at home in my workshop. Uh, we have conversations about fandoms uh, and geeky stuff. I've done a lot of coverage about Ghostbusters over the past couple of months because I was very privileged to be part of the premiere of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and also very privileged to be able to see the filming of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire on the streets of New York City. If you, if you like that kind of stuff, if you like behind the scenes, if you like how to make things work and bring them to life, then you'll probably love this channel. So, you know, hit subscribe, check out the other videos because I have a whole video of us of the making of Ghostbusters on the streets of New York, a video of us at the premiere. There's videos of me riding around in the Ecto on the streets of New York City, super fun. Um, and, you know, I'm really trying to grow this channel. So I'm also interested in what you folks want to see. We had a great chat last night when I did a live stream about some of the things. And this is why we're doing this today, because people said, oh, we'd love to see you doing stuff in your workshop and, and talking about your builds. So back to questions. Mark uh, Solman is saying, what's the cost overall of building this? Um, that's a good question. I haven't fully priced up the whole thing. Let me just turn this camera a bit because I think it's better if I get a shot like this so you can see the pack. Um, so if you don't count the cost of buying the 3D printer um, and you're just counting the cost of um, getting the, the downloads. So actually the, the downloads for the pack are free, but the instructions you need to pay for. So that's about 25 bucks. And then I think I probably took two, two and a half reels of filament to print this. So that was probably, uh, let's say 30 bucks for filament. Um, and then buying all the other bits and pieces. So the pipe, so I've got a box over here full of, you know, pipes and, and ribbon cables and all the kind of bits that you need to finish the pack off. So all of that stuff starts to cost you money. So I reckon it's probably going to cost about 150 to build it in the end and a lot of time. Uh, and then if I add extra pieces to it, there's the Alice frame as well. So it's, it's not cheap, but it's also not massively expensive. And actually for me, I just wanted to go through the process of making one for myself. So that was what was uh, fun for me. Alfie's saying, Ghostbusters is the goat. I agree. Um, let's see. What else have we got here? Um, lots of people saying nice things. I appreciate it. Um, uh, RJ Early saying, love to get a closer look at the bench setup. Always been looking for new ideas. I'll show that in a second. How rich do you have to be to own a proton pack? I will start saving. Um, well, you know, it doesn't, ha you don't have to, like I just say, you don't have to be that rich. So if you're going to print it yourself and you've got the materials, it's not that much. You can get the Spirit Halloween Proton Pack, which is this one that I've got down on the floor here. This one is, I think, $250 to buy this pack. Um, and I've done some mods on this pack, but, um, this is a, what I would call a fantastic entry level pack if you want to want to do ghost busting and you know it, it has the neutrona wand built in and it also has you know some pretty good sound and light built in as well you know for that price it's a good looking pack <laughs> it's a great looking pack and then uh it has the firing at the end so you know it's a good it's a really good pack um for that price and it's also light compared to compared to certainly what I'm going to be building. Um, and so I wore this on the streets for Halloween this year, um, dressed as a Ghostbuster. And it really was a pretty good experience. It wasn't too bad at all. Um, and I haven't forgotten I'm going to show you a workshop. I'll come to that after I've answered these other questions. Um, let's see. Jason saying, hello again from Calgary. Um, you've been on fire lately with the chats. Much respect. Thank you, Jason. I really appreciate that. I'm trying, I'm trying, and people seem to like the lives, so I'm, I'm going to keep, keep, them, keep them coming. Uh, Cameron, uh, should make an RTV trap or drone trap? Uh, yeah, that would be cool. I mean, um, like I, I've said before, I'm going to do a live stream with Ben Eady, who, who was the prop master on Ghostbusters uh, Afterlife. And he was very much involved in the remote control trap from that movie. Um, so um, I'm going to ask him to bring that trap on the live and talk about it a little bit. Because um, I think the two of us will geek out a lot on prop building. 
and, and this kind of stuff. So yeah, um, and again, if you wanna see that video when we do it, uh, subscribe and hit the notify button so you'll get notified uh, when we do it. And, ah, um, oh, Rebecca, hi. Rebecca was actually talking about this yesterday. Sometimes people aren't getting the notifications when I live stream. So there's three things to do. Obviously subscribe, hit the notify bell, so, and, and pick the option to get notified when lives happen. Um, and then uh, the other thing that you need to do is make sure on your phone that you have notifications for YouTube turned on, because if you don't, you obviously won't see that stuff. Um, Mo Pips is saying, I've decided to only put one switch on the pack since it's supposed to be an 84 pack. Right. But with some details from Afterlife, I think that are important. Love it. Yeah. I, I'm up for you making your pack your own. I'm going to just stop the, the, uh, <laughs> the camera from moving there. The AI turned on there for a second to follow me around. But yeah, I'm, I'm all for making packs your own. I, I'm really... Adam Savage does his own style of pack, which I thought was really fun. So check that out. Aspect, how many hours and how much work... Uh, to be insane and epic and, <laughs> and buff as me. No hours at all, uh, Aspect. Um, uh, Rebecca's saying, this is amazing. Thank you, Alfie. Um, if you get slime by slime, what do you do? You take a shower. That's what you do, Alfie. Um, Ghostbusters fan. Uh, can you buy lens diffusers um, and it will get rid of the dice pattern? Ooh, Ghostbusters fan. Drop in chat where I can get the lens diffuser. Thank you. I'd love to find that out. Um, how do you make DIY slime, Mirror Vines is saying. So there's a great video actually on Adam Savage's Tested channel that talks all about making slime for ghost busting. Um, it's a really, really good video. And also the Yes Have Some podcast when I did some slime making as well. Um, I haven't personally made any uh, Ghostbusters slime, uh, but um, there's, a good, there's good instructions on how to do it there. The Soul the Mind, hello. Um, how was it moving from the UK to the USA? Um, a lot. Um, it was a huge group effort with our whole family. My wife did an awful lot to make it happen. Um, the experience of living here was like being on vacation to begin with. And then after a while, it's like, oh, we're living here now. Okay, we've got to get our heads around that. <laughs> so that was how that went. Um, and actually, I have a video on my channel about moving to the UK. If you want to watch that, you'll find it um, buried away in the archives, but you'll find it on the channel. Um, uh, Mo uh, Phipps is saying, I would recommend to get some lens diffusers so you don't have to get one dot uh, in the cyclotron lights, but the whole area of the window is lit up. I love that. Yeah, if you can tell me where I can get that, I will look. Um, uh, Parker Taker saying, have you seen Monster House from 2006? I have, and Gil Kennan directed it, the director of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I love that movie. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Sadistic Minds is saying, do you think 3D printing pack will be better than getting a fiberglass shell? Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to be better. I think, obviously, a fiberglass shell is going to be very robust. And so when you think about this and you think about, um, you know, the strength of it, um, a fiberglass shell is going to be stronger than a 3D print in many respects. And also, I would imagine if you left a 3D print, and this is a PLA print, right? So it's a heat generated print. Um, so a PLA print, if you left it in a very hot car in Florida for a couple of hours, you may find it's a slightly different shape <laughs> after you put it there. So in many respects, I think the fiberglass is superior in that way, but you can also print this in other materials, right? So you don't have to print it with a heat treatment process. You can print it in another way. Um, and so I think it's all up to you. I think what's, uh, for me, I just wanted to get on with it and try it. And 3D printing, it's been great for me. So I think it just depends on what, um, what you're looking to do. Uh, Miravine's saying that looks heavy. This one is actually pretty light. Uh, um, but once I get everything else in it and it working, it's going to be, it's going to be heavy. Um, uh, Muk Classico is saying, experimenting with 3D printed cyclotron lenses, found a pretty nice dark red translucent PLA. Uh, I use PT, uh, PETG for the rest. If only polish one side and there should be a good diffusion. That's a great idea. I hadn't even thought about doing that. Um, I will try that. So you're saying a... PLA red transparent filament, print the lenses. I know that that's part of the printing pack. You can print the lenses and then sand one side. I love it. I'm going to try it. Thank you. That's a terrific idea. I haven't even thought about it. 
See, this is why we have these chats. You guys, I'm not, I'm not coming on here saying that I'm the 100% expert. I'm just enthusiastic. And so your knowledge and creativity is much appreciated. Um, if you want to, uh, to buy an Alice frame, you should use PVC pipes. It's significantly cheaper it is. Yeah, you can build Alice frames yourself and there's some great instructions on YouTube. I actually do have um, an Alice frame here. This one has black straps with it, but this is the, if you're not familiar with an Alice frame, this is what we're talking about. So this goes on the back of the motherboard on the pack. And then this bit obviously goes on your back. Um, and these are black straps. I have actually have a green, a set of green straps um, that I can use for that. But yeah, uh, let's see. Um, Simba saying, Matt, you better be ready to do some double work, 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 work your kids, if your kids want packs too. Yes, I know. We, when we did our Ghostbusters experience, we're actually very lucky. We uh, borrowed a lot of packs from people because we had uh, Max, my son was in a pack because he was a Ghostbuster. Um, and when we had other people in packs, I was, was in a pack. Yeah, anyway, there were a lot of packs and thankfully Nick was very helpful and obliged and uh, lent us a bunch. Uh, Cameron saying you should make a slime blower. That would be a big job. <laughs> it would be a big job. I have thought about it though. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, what else are we saying? Um, okay, and there's more stuff about the diffuser. That's great, they sell them on Etsy. Okay, I'll have a look. Um, Alfie's saying, once I thought my house was haunted. Definitely need the Ghostbusters in your life then. Moe's saying, I got lens diffusers from Eric Props. Okay, he's based in the UK, so there are probably some options in the US that don't cost as much and ship if you're in the US. Thank you. Um, Okay, Gavin's heading out. Thanks for joining, Gavin. Um, Aspect saying that <laughs> they would play uh, role play as the key master uh, <laughs> for, for Ghostbusters. Not the gatekeeper, the key master. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Cheesy Fingers, hello, Cheesy Fingers. Uh, just bought the Ghostbusters game for Sega Genesis. <laughs> nice, that's cool. I love a good bit of retro gaming. Uh, Mirror Vines, I am the key master. I love it, I love it. Cool. Good, wow, I got through all of those questions. Um, so, um, let's, um, uh, Alfie's gonna watch the video tomorrow, that's fine. So, people were asking for a little bit of a view. Now, it's gonna be a bit of a mess. So just give me a second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap this around here in a second. Let's see if I can turn this around. No, that is not what I wanted to do. And now, and now my, uh, everything's getting broken. <laughs> You can see the ceiling here. Okay, hang on. I can't work my tripod. Um, there we go. Okay, all right. Let me see if I can show you around. So it's a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, but this, basically, um, what you'll see here is I have a bunch of screwdrivers of different sizes that I like uh, that I can grab quickly. That's what I have here. Um, tweezers and things that I need for doing little pieces. So anything in, in boxes or things, I've got some... Uh, these are little jeweler sc screwdrivers as well. So basically everything kind of screwdriver related is here. Uh, and then this is my big dump <laughs> of, of stuff, mostly pens and a few other bits and pieces are in here. Um, and then tongue depressors, super helpful. I always like a good tongue depressor. Why? Well, they are fantastic for mixing stuff. Um, and I've got all my tubs here for mixing, but when you want to mix up some kind of glue or something else, those are fantastic, and I've got loads more here. All of this stuff here, actually, in this is all for, for finishing 3D printing that I've got there. And then, load of tape, always need tape close at hand. And then up here, a bunch of little screwdriver bits and my tiny screwdriver that I use particularly for putting together um, 3D props. And then if you come over here, let me move this out of the way. Uh, and then on the back of my wall here, I've got, again, all the tools that I use most regularly, kind of um, all up there. And then um, over here, and this is behind my pack, some saws and other things, um, wrenches. And then we come over here, we've got a bunch of power tools. So I've got nail guns uh, all along this wall and batteries uh, for, for various power tools. And actually on this shelf down here, I've got all my big power tools base down there. And then Dremel, again, that's easy to get to because I need to use a Dremel quite frequently. And then on the shelf above this, 
Um, I have different things like, uh, these are all different kind of connectors and screws and things. And then here, batteries, <laughs> um, electronic pieces, then loads of electronics. So I've got LEDs, um, you know, this is all soldering stuff, cable ties up here, more cable ties, um, various control chip chips for controlling things like servos. I've got buttons like, you know, kind of Ghostbusters proton type, pack type buttons, a terminal strip, patching wire, everything I need, and then a bunch of electrical tools. So uh, things for uh, testing and stuff. And then here, as I go over, I've got more sticky stuff as a way of describing it. Um, and, you know, things for, again, 3D printing connectors, a lot of LEDs. This is, this is a lot of LEDs right here <laughs> of different uh, brightnesses and types. Um, and then uh, a whole bunch of uh, different connectors and screws and things like that. And then everywhere else, I mean, again, kind of under here, you'll see there's a whole bunch of other containers I've got a compressor down here. And then this, it's a bit of a mess right now, but this is my spraying booth. So uh, when I spray stuff, I can do it in this room. Um, and it's just basically a filter with a fan behind it that draws all of the, the fumes out. Um, so yeah, it's constantly keeping me busy and crazy. So yeah. Right, let's see if I can turn this camera around without um, everything breaking. No, I can't because I... I don't know what I'm doing with this with this tripod. <laughs> so there you go. Um, okay, let me see if I can turn this around and get this working again. Right, there we go. That's better. Good. Okay. <laughs> I think that vaguely worked. I'm just going to take this off for a second because um, because it it definitely wasn't doing what it's supposed to do. The problem with this, um, I have, a, I have a, a mount that I use for doing stuff when I'm doing these live streams. Um, and what sometimes happens is that it doesn't always work the way I want it to. You've probably seen me messing with it when it's trying to do, um, uh, trying to do um, AI following. And sometimes it does exactly what I want it to do. And sometimes it does not. But I'm going to just say that probably most of it is user error. <laughs> So great. So hopefully that was helpful, and you got to see um, some uh, something about my about my workshop there. Um, any other questions you got about proton pack building um, or anything to do with Ghostbusters props and the kind of props I'm building? I'm very very happy to answer any of your questions. Um, just ask them in chat, and I'm happy to to chat with you about them. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, you know, and and as Sneela said, you know. It's not a huge workshop, but it meets my needs. And actually I have a different room just kind of over there that I call the crafting room. <laughs> and that's got my 3D printer. That's got um, a laser cutter. It's got the more kind of stuff that doesn't make a mess. Cause out here, a lot of this is designed for, it's gonna get dusty, it's gonna get messy, it's gonna get smelly. And then I've got another space kind of over there that's more for the, okay, I'm gonna start doing things in a slightly warmer, uh, a different environment really so it's that's a kind of cleaner crafting space and this is the dirtier crafting space is my, is my way of describing it uh alfie wants me to make a slime proton pack sprayer i like that idea uh Sneedler saying how long does it take to 3d print the packs skeleton um a while so i was printing this for a very very long time um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot. So the, the 3d printer was running, like it felt like for three weeks nonstop, it probably wasn't that long, but it felt like it. And again, depending on the quality that you print it, you can print things at different qualities. Um, it has an impact on the time that it obviously takes to print it. So if you print it at a lower quality, it's going to take a lot longer time for you to finish it. Um, but when you're printing something big like this and it's not got a lot of detail in it, um, I did kind of change the quality. So when I was printing the stuff that needed to be of a higher quality, so a good example would be, if I can find it, I 3D printed these resistors, right? And I had to print them at a high quality because want, you wanted to see the logo on here um, and on here uh, so that it would look more real. And so these, you, I printed at very, very high quality. 
but the larger pieces of the pack I printed at um, a slightly lower quality because I knew that I was going to sand them down and, and tidy them up. Um, RJ Early, hi RJ, uh, very cool setup. Definitely give me a few ideas for, my, for what I can do with my shop. Thank you so much. I love your videos. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Mamoru saying, dang, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> I try. I try. Uh, Mo Pips is saying, I have a very small workshop, so space is at a premium. I'm very lucky to be uh, a member in a marketplace, so that's where I do my 3D printing and laser cutting. I'm looking at getting into 3D printer though. Yeah, when you don't have a lot of space, it is challenging because you realize how far you start to spread out. And that's certainly what's happened to me is that um, I had quite a small space to begin with. And then you go, oh, I need to do this. And then, oh, I need to do that. And then you just end up going, oh, I need more space and <laughs> more space. Um, or sometimes you just have to be smart about how you can repurpose different pieces of space to do certain things. Um, and again, I've had to do that before. But that requires you to be very tidy working. And um, that isn't always me. Sometimes, I mean, you can see, this is fairly tidy right now. It's actually quite messy. Because um, I've got things like this everywhere, like these boxes of pieces that I've put together of all the bits that have got to be put on the pack uh, are kind of sitting around while I try and figure out my next step or what I'm going to do next. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, always a, it's always an ongoing battle to try and find the right space to work in. Uh, let's see, who have we got here? Uh, Spidey2099 is saying that they saw slime behind me. I, I hope not. Uh, I hope there's no ectoplasm <laughs> in here, otherwise I'm in trouble. Because my pack's not finished and I won't be able to trap it or catch it. Um, let's see, uh, Alfie's saying, do I have a slimer? I don't have a slimer. Um, people have asked me about that before, maybe I should. Sneed is saying, I'm um, honored to be in the geek school because it's very interesting and exciting. Yes. Uh, is that what you say? Ex I think you meant exciting. I'm sure you did. Uh, Clay uh, Biggs is saying, um, are you going to put lights in your pack? Yes, I am. So I was just talking about earlier with some of the folks that are still here on chat. Um, but this is the electronics kit that I've got to go in my pack. So this is the, um, the bar chart. Very bright. As you can see, when I point that into camera, it's incre <laughs> incredibly bright. Uh, and then these uh, are the lights that are going to go into the cyclotron. And then there's a switch here that I'm going to swap out for a an afterlife style switch, which is the 3D printing is here for. Um, so this is going to be the switch that will be underneath the ion arm to turn the pack on and off. Um, and actually one of the jobs I need to do later, I won't do it on the live because it's going to involve doing some spray painting. Uh, but I'm going to need to spray paint this and tidy this up and, and make it look the way it should look for the movie. Um, what else uh, are people saying? Uh, can I 3D print a Roblox smile? I don't know what that is aspect. You'll have to enlighten me. Um, a camera and like a boomerang ghost trap disc. Wow, that sounds like a cool a cool weapon. Slender is saying, how long do you think it takes how long it will take to be finished. You know what, it's in that point where it's so close now, I'm so close to finishing this, but there's some technical things I have to work out. So this whole thing about how do I get these lights to stay in the pack, right? That was the whole point of me uh, designing and 3D printing this piece that's gonna fit inside each of these to enable that to, to work. So that's, that's the hope. Um, but now some folks have talked about creating a lens diffuser. I'm going to, I'm going to probably literally after this, I'm going to go find some, um, some transparent, uh, filament and, and try that. Cause I think that would be a fun thing to, fun thing to do. Uh, let's see who else is saying stuff. Um, Alfie's got to stay puffed plushy. That's cool. Um, did I, I, Clay, yes, I did 3D print the switch. So um, uh, the Solari brothers have a great STL uh, for printing this switch, which was an absolute, an amazing thing because trying to find the exact switch or make the exact switch for the pack from Afterlife is challenging. And in fact, if I can find it here. So what I was actually in the midst of doing <laughs> was I was in the middle of modding this, which is a regular kind of like light switch and then I was going to 3D print the little bobble on there which is on this one here but when they bought this out 
that's fantastic. And if you want to 3D print your own switch, you just buy this from Amazon, and then this, um, you have to take the switch out, but you replace it with this one, and that is a fantastic thing to be able to do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what that's what I've done. Uh, Solari Brothers, if you want to check out their uh, Instagram, they have a free STL and a whole video on how to how to do this. And so I highly recommend that if you're planning on printing your own switch, because uh, this is fantastic. It's a, it's the missing piece that we've all needed. <laughs> So great work from them. Um, <laughs> Nerd is like, another stream? Another stream? Yeah, I'm doing another stream. Well, what happened, Nerd? After you left yesterday, people were saying, we should stream from the workshop. And so this is what's happening. So we're streaming. And I was going to do some actual workshop stuff. I've done a couple of little things to show people things. But actually, people have been asking so many questions. Um, <laughs> I've just been standing here answering them, which is fine. I'm happy to do that. Um, uh, the Parker Taker, heat them up. Uh, yeah, all the learning uh, experience adds up. Uh, it does. You're right, uh, Snadler, it does. Uh, hello, uh, Isa. Is that Isa? Uh, I'm sorry if I've said your name wrong. Please correct me if I have. Uh, Muri, hi, nerd. Can't wait to see the finished pack. Me neither. I'm going to need to borrow one of your many neutrino ones <laughs> to go with it. Um, uh Clay, yeah, no, you're welcome. Uh, that uh, Again, you know, happy to talk about anything that I've been going through the process of doing. And if you are interested in 3D printing your own pack, very happy to answer any questions about the process like I've been doing today. If you're new to the stream and you've just arrived, um, very, very happy to chat about that. Um, let's see. Uh, Mo Pips is saying, I was thinking about making a lever system that would activate a different switch but the 3D print really helps. Yeah, that's literally what I was doing. So let me show you what I had in mind. The reason that you'll see here that I have this piece of wood on the original switch that came out here is that the idea was that I was going to put that on top and then that would, that would work. So that was what I was working on, modding this with that in mind. But actually, the 3D printed switch is so much better. So um, yeah, definitely check, definitely check up the, the Solari Brothers. Um, let's see, what else are people saying? Uh, Alfie, what day is the next live stream? I, I've got to figure that out because next week here in New Jersey, at least for our school district, is spring break. So my week's going to be a little bit different. But the plan was to stream from New York and to stream from Dana Barrett's apartment. Uh, next week. So that's the plan. I will, once I get my schedule sorted out, I will try and give you guys some notice by posting that in the, in the uh, you know, when you can see what's scheduled. Um, I'll try and make sure that happens. Um, uh, <laughs> no, it's talking about the number of uh, neutrino ones that he has. Uh, a number, a number. I'm just going to say a number of neutrino ones <laughs> is how many there are. Nerd is saying, uh, did you print the pack? Yes, I did. I know you mentioned uh, the fear of it melting in the sun. <laughs> yeah, I did print the pack. It's a PLA print, so uh, it obviously uses heat to, to, um, to manage the filament. So yes, it's a 3D printed pack. And in fact, if I turn this around, if I take it off the motherboard in the back here, you can see there are multiple pieces. So the cyclotron is, is multiple pieces. This is multiple pieces. And actually, printing it's one thing, but but putting it all together is a whole other thing uh, when you're trying to put the pack together uh, and make it all kind of come together. And then after you put it together, then you're sanding it and you're filling it uh, to make it look flat and to make it look good, to make it look uh, realistic. Um, Snedler, can you make a video one day so I can see how you 3D print stuff? Yes, absolutely, I will. In fact, I'm going to make a video on how I put this together. And um, I don't show it very much, but if you, I don't know if you've seen it, I have a video on making a, uh, a thumper from Dune. So I made a 3D, uh, a 3D thumper, 3D printed thumper from Dune, and there's quite a number, of, quite a few of the steps of 3D printing that there. So if you want to look at that video, that will give you a good start, at least on, I did, I had to model some stuff from scratch uh, for that video as well. So I show a little bit of the modeling process and the tool that I use. And one of the other things I was talking about last night is often when I'm creating videos for YouTube, what I'm trying to do is 
create something that's clickable and consumable in like about 15 minutes. Um, but one of the conversations we were having last night about me potentially creating a membership for my YouTube channel is to make those longer versions of videos available to people. So if you're a fan and you want to get into the detail more and you want to see, you know, what was the whole process soup to nuts of me trying to craft this thing and put it together, um, I'm really thinking of starting to do some of that stuff because I know people have been asking me about it. Uh, right. Other questions. Uh, the Parker Taker, is there something strange in your neighborhood? Who are you going to call? Uh, nobody, because I've got a pack. I can do it myself. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, let's keep going. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name because it's in, um, in uh, text that I can't read properly. My daughter would be able to read it because she can, can read Russian. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it's but I I can't uh, I can't read it so I apologize that I can't pronounce your name but they say wow that's amazing just can't imagine how it works I'm not good at electronics um, again sometimes electronics can be really scary but it's not that scary I've found um, and I think the thing for me is when I try a project if I'm passionate about a project and I want to try doing it um, I just just go for it. I just go for it and I learn as I'm doing it. And I think that's sometimes the best way to learn because if you're really interested in something, you're like, I, you know, for me, it's like, I want to pack. So I'm gonna need to figure it out. I'm gonna need to go through it. And as you start to unpack those things that you think feel scary um, as part of that project, like, oh, the electronics scares me, or, you know, I made an animatronic dinosaur head. I've never done anything with electronic animatronics ever before. <laughs> and it really kicked my butt sometimes when I was trying to do it and I was figuring stuff out on the go, but because I wanted this thing and actually because I needed it because I was using it for a Jurassic Park experience I was building, it meant that I had to just push through. And so I think, you know, that's my view on that kind of stuff. So any anyone can do this stuff. I, I genuinely believe it. Uh, the best favorite player, Ghostbusters. Yes, Ghostbusters indeed. Nerd is saying, does the bumper come off? Yes, the bumper will come off. So it's screwed on uh, the sides here like this so the bumper can be removed. And you can see it's a little bit moving right now because I haven't screwed it in thoroughly on the inside. Uh, but yeah, the bumper will, will come off. Um, let's see, uh, best Fortnite player. So you watch the new Ghostbusters film? I, I have, I actually went to the premiere. <laughs> Uh, and uh, there's a whole video on my channel. If you're new to the channel and you like Ghostbusters and you want to know about Frozen Empire, I have some behind the scenes videos on this channel. Um, I have um, how, they, how they filmed the chase sequence in New York. I was on set for that, so you can see that video. Uh, and I also um, have a coverage of the premiere, which was really fun. So if you're into Ghostbusters, um, I'm assuming you are, if you're here, you probably saw this and went, oh, this looks interesting. Um, check out my channel, uh, drop a subscription, you'll find all of that, all of that cool stuff. Um, what's the time in your country? In Moscow, it's 11.30 p.m. Wow, it's in the evening. So uh, right now it's a lot earlier in the day. So it's, uh, in fact, what time is it? I can't even remember. It's, four, it's, it's half past four is what it is. Thank you, Aspect, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for saying that uh, I'll have more subscribers because everything you make is amazing. I like it. I really like it. Thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Um, and thank you, Stephanie's check doing a time check for us. Rain, hello. Welcome to the chat. Um, so, um, any questions? If you're new here, by the way, hello. Welcome. It's really good to have you here. Um, where have you landed? What is this channel? I make stuff like this. Um, I uh, go and experience stuff like this uh, and uh, try and make it at home. So go to theme parks, go to the filming of movies, um, go to shows and see these amazing experiences that they create. And I'm like, how do they create that? Let's, let's recreate these things for ourselves. Let's make these things at home um, and try and create experiences for ourselves. That's the kind of point of this channel. Um, so uh, Aspect is saying my channel is popping off. Thank you, it seems to be. Um, I'm very grateful for all of the people that are uh, here and that are saying nice things. Miravine saying, I'm from Switzerland. Wow, welcome. From which part of Switzerland are you from? Um, uh, XT3 official, hi, it looks good so far. Thank you, yeah, and a lot of work to do. A lot of work to still do. 
Uh, Rain saying that's impressive. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, the plan is um, to start moving on uh, to um, to some of these other bits. I'm loving the fact that you folks in chat are, are, are finding where you are in different geographies. It's fantastic. And it's always amazing to me. Here I am stood in my workshop and there's people from all over the world uh, tuning in to watch this. One of the most amazing things about the internet, right, is that we can uh, create friendships and relationships from different parts of the world and uh, talk about stuff that we mutually love. I love that. I love that about it. And um, I have to say that since I've started kind of pushing into doing a lot of Ghostbusters stuff lately, my channel isn't just Ghostbusters, it's all kinds of nerd-related geekery. Um, but I found the Ghostbusters community awesome, um, and I found fans in general awesome. It's been so fun to, to find out how people are feeling about the fandom and chatting about it. It's been really, really good. So if you've got things you want to say or stuff you want to connect about in the chat, please feel free to do that. Um, uh, Gritty Guy, hello. Uh, what's the best Ghostbusters movie? And I was actually at the premiere as well. No way, that's awesome. Uh, what's, the, what's my favorite is the original. My favorite is the original. And I kind of like Afterlife as well. I really enjoyed the new film. Um, but I would say that um, the original Ghostbusters and Afterlife those are my personal two favorite Ghostbusters movie. Star Girl is saying, um, thank you for all I do. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, the videos have made you smile. Well, that's great. Um, that's, that's really good to hear. Thank you. And sometimes, you know, we all need an uplift and we can find that uplift in different places. And, and knowing that there are folks out there that enjoy the same things as us and just connecting with people can make a big difference to how we feel. So uh, I, I appreciate it too, it helps me. Um, I wasn't having the best day today. So I'm, it's been great to come on the stream and chat with you guys and uh, it's lifted my spirits a little bit. So I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Um, Rain is saying, do your stuff ever go in movies? So a long time ago, I say a long time ago, it's not really that long ago, um, I used to be a filmmaker myself, so I don't make stuff for big Hollywood movies, um, but I love big Hollywood movies, <laughs> particularly things like this. And so I love recreating some of those things. Um, but I have made stuff that's been in my own movies, and that was a whole conversation we had on the live stream last night about my past film career <laughs> as an independent filmmaker and director and producer. Um, and I used to have to do everything from uh, building the props to doing makeup to writing the scripts and filming. I really enjoyed that though. I liked all the parts of the process of filmmaking. It was really always awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, Stephanie's saying the Ghostbusters fandom is a wonderful thing to be a part of. I agree. Uh, I've met some wonderful folks. I also think the, the entry level, I know we've been talking a lot about packs today. Um, but you know, you don't need a pack to be a Ghostbusters fan or even a cosplayer, right? You can get a flight suit. You can get a badge made up with your name on it. And like, you can get those on Etsy really easily. They're like 15 bucks. And so flight suit, belt, badge, you're, you know, you're already cosplaying a Ghostbuster, which is fantastic. So it's an easy place to start. Um, let's see. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just reading all of these questions, thinking. Ste uh, Stephanie's saying, love Ghostbusters 1 and 2 and Frozen Empire. That's awesome. Um, Bag does stuff. Missed out on the stream where you did, uh, where did you source your parts? So actually, uh, great question. So all of this is a 3D print. Um, so everything that you see here is 3D printed. And then um, there are lots of different parts. This part, which is the electronics piece, and there's lots of different variations of this. So this is the bit that does all the lights and stuff. Um, that I bought this from, uh, from an Etsy store and I wish I could remember which store I bought it from, but I did buy it from an Etsy store. Um, and what I'm not showing here, but I do have, but it's being laid under a book to keep it flat, is all the stickers that go on here as well. So you can buy an awful lot of these different bits and pieces on Etsy. Um, and, and if you don't want to buy them on Etsy, there's loads of instructions online for how to make them yourself, which is also super cool. Um, but this is um, the, 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 the Q-Pack 
uh, the printout here so you can get that online. And there's a great forum on Facebook. There's a 3D uh, Ghostbusters props forum uh, where there's a whole forum of people that are making Ghostbusters props for 3D printing them. And so you can pretty much 3D print everything, even things like this is, and again, I, I, don't, I don't think this is perfect. I'd love to get an actual clipboard valve, but I 3D printed this, this clipboard valve for that pack. I'm going to eventually buy a proper clipboard valve to go on it. Um, but, you know, if you're just starting out and you want to start, you know, building something, you can do it this way. And then, you know, as you get money to improve your pack, you can add extra bits. You know, the, the, the Raytheon crank here, that, that was 3D printed. And, and then I've got this box over here full of all the pipes and cables and things uh, that need to go on the pack later uh, is all part of the process of, of putting the pack together. So what else are people saying? Let's see. Um, uh, Mr. Classica is saying, um, I got to see Ghostbusters 2 in cinemas 35 years later. I finally saw another one on the big screen. That was a fun experience. Uh, it helped that I really liked Frozen Empire. Ghostbusters is such a fun fandom. Yeah, I agree. It's great. And it's a great time to be a Ghostbusters fan, I think. There's so much happening at the moment. Um, Stephanie, yeah, I wish I could afford to hire you as a filmmaker. <laughs> uh, maybe one day. I mean, I don't do... Really, the main filmmaking I do now is my YouTube. Uh, so the videos you see, the long-form videos on my YouTube are the main stuff I do. And then I do a lot of work with Ecto-1NJ. In fact, we're just making a project, uh, starting a project uh, in the next week, um, a film project that we're doing together. Um, Rain is saying, do I only do Ghostbusters? No, I don't. I do much more than Ghostbusters. Uh, Ghostbusters is just one of the things I've been focusing on. But um, I did a video on how to make a Dune thumper from the Dune franchise. I've done videos on making animatronic dinosaurs. I like all sorts of fandoms, everything from Ghostbusters to Jurassic Park to Star Wars. Um, I'm really into any of those things. Just happens to be that Ghostbusters has been the focus for the last month or so of the channel with the new movie coming out. Um, uh, I only watched Ghostbusters 1 with my uncle when I was about nine years old. This movie left a great impression on me. That's cool. Yeah, they're great, they're great movies. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, Snedler's just repeating what I was saying or saying it before I said it. I didn't get to the answer, but yeah, I just did some stuff from Dune. Yes, you're right. Uh, Stephanie's saying you're doing an excellent job. Thank you. Um, thank you for your kind comments, folks. Uh, Mo Phipps is saying, when I went to see Frozen Empire in the cinema, it was a Thursday night and it was the only, it was only the hardcore fans. Such a fun experience. Just enjoying the film with some other fans. Yeah, my favorite screening ever. I mean, obviously going to the premiere was a, a whole thing. But I said this before, when I went to the premiere of Frozen Empire, it had been such a long day. We'd been at the firehouse all day with the Ecto. We'd met a lot of the stars. We'd met Gil, we'd met Logan, we'd met McKenna, uh, we'd met Ernie, all at the firehouse. And then I'd been speaking with fans. We got to see the Ecto Z and look at the packs from the movie. It was a crazy, crazy day. And so, so much energy had been expended by having all those incredible experiences. And I got up at like four in the morning. <clears throat> by the time I was in the theater, I was so tired. And it was a great experience watching it, but it felt like it didn't sink in. And so the second time I watched Frozen Empire, which was at a preview screening for fans in New Jersey, was awesome. Uh, the audience were laughing. They were really enjoying it. It was just the best, just the best experience. Uh, let's see. Um, Alfie is saying, do I have an Ecto-1? So I, I personally don't have an Ecto-1, but my good friend Nick is Ecto-1 NJ. If you want to see that car, it's Ecto-1 underscore NJ on Instagram. And um, I'm friends with Nick and he has a beautiful Ecto-1 replica. Um, and I've been very lucky to be able to drive in that car dressed as a Ghostbuster through the streets of New York City. There's a whole video on that on my channel. Um, and that's super fun and so um i get to do a lot of stuff with nick and i do a lot of video content for him um and we're actually starting a project next week which is super fun so i'll keep you guys posted about that project um let's see so many questions for people who live in other countries could I ask you some sure if you want to go ahead uh Gicky joe's got a problem with their vending machine i'm not sure i can help you with that um <laughs> Uh, what's my favorite Ghostbusters? Um, 
I just said um, that uh, Ghostbusters 1 and Afterlife are my two favourite Ghostbusters movies. Uh, Giga wants a Ghostbusters candy bar. I, I can't help you there, I'm sorry. Um, I was sneakless talking about the way I was on the live stream. So I promised, uh, just for context, I had promised that I would live stream the minute I came out of the theatre from the premiere. And um, <coughs> and it was cool, right? I live streamed from inside the Ecto-1. So my ride home from the premiere was the Ecto-1, <laughs> which was fantastic. And you can find that video um, on here. But I looked a bit like this on the video. <laughs> I was just so exhausted. Uh, it was kind of crazy. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, and Nerd is saying that was a wild three to five days. Wasn't even there. <laughs> But all the posting was exhausting. Yeah, well, I know that you had a, had a, a, your own person on the ground covering stuff, and you were posting that stuff out. Even that sneaky picture—it was very funny. Nerd affiliated um, sent me a picture of myself from their super spy that was in the Ecto One while I was doing that live stream. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> crossing the streams, crossing the streams. But yeah, that was that was really funny. Uh, Stephanie's saying that the, that car is beautiful. Yeah, Nick's car is really really great. Um, let's see, um, Nerd is saying, how many packs did you go through on the premiere day? Uh, how many better packs did you go through? Better pack, oh, battery packs, battery packs. So you know what? Um, the phone that I'm using for this stream here is, is the latest iPhone um, Pro Max and the battery on this phone is amazing. So this phone lasted all morning and all the way through to the premiere. And then I had a, a, you know, a wireless battery pack that I popped on the back. And I used that when I was waiting in the fan pen to stream again. And then I didn't need to charge my phone again. It was, it was still good when I got home. I mean, I think I had a, like 5% by the time I got home. But amazingly, I only had one battery pack, which is crazy to me uh, that, that, it, that it lasted that long. Um, how many Proton packs have I made? Alfie's asking. This is the first one that I've made, so I haven't really made one. <laughs> but like I said before, I have modded this one, which is my spirit pack. Uh, so this is the one that I've done some modding on uh, to make it look a little bit more afterlife. It's not actually an afterlife because it doesn't have the additional wiring looms in here and stuff. But this is a you know Ghostbusters uh, one style pack that looks like it's, you know, had a lot of use. So that's what that pack is. So that's, I guess that's the first pack that I've, I've modded and made. And then, as I've been saying on this stream, I've also modded um, some Spirit Halloween traps. This is one of them. And when I say modded, added extra paneling and pieces onto the top of the trap uh, to make it look more like a screen accurate trap here. So if you look at this here, it's got uh, if you think about, I don't know if you've seen an original uh, Spirit Halloween trap, but it has a very simple display here. So I modded this display at the top here so you can see it looks more like a bar chart and it's got this extra LED light here, which says the trap is full. Um, so that was the, uh, that was the intent of this. And then the other thing I did earlier on the stream uh, that you'll see here is I started demonstrating how I make uh, these things look more patinaed and old. So if you look at this side, this is the plasticky look, just the standard look. And then this is what it looks like when you've done the patinering work. And it's very, very, very simple uh, to, to use. Very, very simple um, to do, in fact. And so if you want me to show you more of how to make these changes to the trap, uh, just throw it in chat and I'll, I'll do some work on this now and show you how easy it is to make it look scuffed up like this. And, add this silver edge so it looks like the paint's been chipped off. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Um, okay, uh, Sneedler saying, uh, Matt, thank you by the way for sharing that evening with us. It was almost like I was there myself. Oh, that's really great to hear. I, that was kind of the, the hope. I really, really wanted to, people to feel like they were part of it and actually, Hopefully this makes sense, right? For me to be able to share that with folks made that more fun for me. So seeing, having your questions, I mean, it was awesome. So many people joined 
uh, the live streams that day, and particularly the live stream at the premiere from the fan pen. We even had Ben Eady come on <laughs> the stream and join us um, and and chat with us. It was super awesome. So yeah, just just absolutely fantastic. And nerd, you don't need to worry about stuffing your your mouth with food. That's okay. You're you're welcome to do so. That's you know how this how this goes. Um, okay. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out your name. Big big brain time. I, that's the only way I can, I think the parenthesis helps. Welcome to the live stream. Where where, where are, am I and where do we get it? I, I'm in my workshop. This channel is Experience Explorers where we explore movies and shows and theme parks and other experiences like that. Uh, and then we create some of those experiences when we get back. And this is my workshop. And, we're in the process of creating a proton pack from Ghostbusters. So that's what we're doing here uh, right now on the, on the workshop. And I'm talking through some of the props that I've been making. And we were just chatting about the uh, experience that I had of going to the premiere of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And this stream is coming from the United States. That's where it's coming from. Even though I am British, I live in America. <laughs> so this is where the stream is coming from. Uh, Let's see. Okay. Um, uh, big brain time. Thank you. That's epic. I'm sorry that I can't. I'm, I'm looking at your other part of your name, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to try pronouncing it. <laughs> okay. Nerd Affiliate is saying, um, per, smash the like button, everyone. We've got 79 people on here and only 12 likes. Thank you, nerd. Yeah. So if you're enjoying this, hit the like button. And, and, and if you're enjoying it more than liking it, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Because as I keep saying, uh, you know, on, on this channel, there's so much other stuff to see. If you're into Ghostbusters, there's loads of Ghostbusters videos, not just live streams, but like full length videos of a whole bunch of stuff that's, uh, that we're doing um, and have done. And then there's also, um, you know, building an animatronic dinosaur is one of the videos we've done. Building a June Thumper is one of the videos we've done. Um, exploring even there's even videos of us exploring the the behind the scenes of um, of all the filming locations of Stranger Things, all those kinds of stuff that you you'll find here on this channel if that's the kind of thing that you're into. Um, how much is the Hasbro Proton Pack? That is a good question. It changes in price. I think it's four hundred plus. I think it's four nine nine. If I'm correct or wrong, put it in chat, folks that know better than me. But I believe that's the price if you can get hold of it. It's very hard to get hold of. Basically, when they put those things up for sale, they sell instantly. Um, uh, <laughs> Big Brain Time saying, don't worry about pronouncing my username. I know it's weird. I just subbed. Thank you. That's super kind of you. Thank you for subbing. I appreciate it. And if you, you're like Big Brain Time and you're enjoying this um, and you're interested in the other videos we create, so I do more live streams like this. This is actually the first one I've done for my workshop. Um, but we did a live stream last night where we just talked about geeky, 80s movie stuff. We talked about Back to the Future. We talked about Ghostbusters um, from what I've been calling the fandom foyer <laughs> is what that live stream is. And also I live stream from New York. So we've been live streaming from Ghostbusters filming locations, which has been pretty fun for the last few days. So uh, this week we live streamed from the New York Public Library and the lions that are featured in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And then um, the week before we live streamed from the firehouse. And this week we're going to live stream from Spook Central, Dana Barrett's apartment in New York City. So if you're interested in those kind of things, um, like and subscribe and make sure your notify notifications are on because you will get a notification when I start live streaming from those places. Uh, let's see, who else is saying stuff? Um, ED is saying, I love to visit so many countries and have eaten Russian bread. Oh, this is an answer to um, our Russian friend that's on right now. Um, Thank you for that. Uh, who's asking questions about Russian cuisine? Uh, yeah, the rye bread, very strong, and uh, Russian soup and vegetables. Yes. In fact, uh, that's great. Good answer. Thank you for that. I've had some Russian candy before as well. Um, okay. Uh, will I be doing any other props? Uh, XT3 official. Hi. Yes, I will be doing other props. So there'll be a whole video like a full video, not a live stream of the, the whole process of doing this. I actually already have a video on my channel of building a, a, a working trap mod of a spirit trap. Um, there's a whole video on making a 
dinosaur animatronic dinosaur head in a containment like in Jurassic World. Um, and I've done a Dune Thumper. <coughs> so those are the props that I've done on the channel. But yes, there will be more props coming because the plan is that as we lead into the spooky season, we're going to do a live Back to the Future experience. So I'll be making some Back to the Future props here. And as some of you may know, I'm a bit of a fan of the Alien and Aliens franchise. And so I've always wanted to make an animatronic alien head. And there's a new Alien movie coming out really soon. And so I think to line up with that, I'll probably sculpt and make uh, an alien xenomorph head because I'm just desperate to do that. And uh, whether even if people don't want to watch me do it, I'm going to do that. <laughs> so those are the kind of things I'll be doing uh, as we come up. And the hope is that when we do the live Back to the Future experience, um, that we're going to have a DeLorean time machine as part of that experience. And I give you guys a tour of that time machine. It's going to be super fun. So that's, that's hopefully a helpful uh, answer, XT3. Um, let's see. Okay, so Nerd is saying that HasLab was 399. That's a better price than I remember. It's not bad, really, considering how great the HasLab is. Um, what website did I get the switch from? So, um, just to confirm, are you talking about, about this switch, the 3D printer of the switch? If you are, <coughs> sorry, I've got a cough today. Um, there's two parts to it. So this is a 3D printed piece, and then this is the switch that does the that makes it work, obviously, as a real switch. Um, the Soleri Brothers on Instagram, that web, that web, so at Soleri Brothers, I think that's right, nerd affiliated, I know that you know these folks too, so if I've got it wrong, throw it in chat, um, whether I've got that wrong or not. When I do the full video of this pack, I'm gonna put um, a full link to this, um, how to print this and where to get it from and um, link you to their video, because this is a free STL, which is wonderful that they provided. Um, and so I want to make sure I give them full credit for this, but this is a fantastic thing. Oh, look, my AI moving cameras kicked in. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, and no problem. Uh, if, if I've said stuff before, I recognize people are coming and going on the live stream all the time. So, so there's absolutely no need to, to worry about asking me the same question. I'm happy to answer those things again. Um, uh, uh, Mo Pips is saying, I really enjoy making Ghostbusters props. They're really simple and have a lot of opportunities to hide mistakes. I love that. That's so true. Hang on. Come on, AI. Stop moving around. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, um, I, I agree with you. Uh, there, that's... Sorry, I can't get control of my gimbal here. Uh, there we go. That's better. Um, yes, uh, I agree with you. You can hide those little discretion indiscretions when you're making stuff. Uh, and coming from making Star Wars helmets, that's a nice change. Yes. Yes, and uh, I have not made any Star Wars helmets, but I really want to. In fact, part of the specification for my 3D printing rig was that it had to be big enough to print a Stormtrooper helmet. That was my kind of enter entering in point <laughs> for my 3D printer. Um, uh, Alfie's back. Welcome back, Alfie. Um, Samuel Hunt. Hi. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the the chat. Uh, let's see who else have we got. Alicia. Um, Aspect is saying, hey, to Back to the Future. Aspect may be here. I think Aspect may be Max, my son. <laughs> You're not Aspect? No. You are. Um, nice clutch. <laughs> um, that was my son, Max, who just came in, who has been in the chat. I think he's Aspect. Um, Samuel, hello. Um, Big Brain Times. Animatronic alien head would be awesome, I know. I would love to make one you know, with the second jaw that comes out and goes <laughs> That would be so fun. How easy that's going to be to do, I don't know. I might have to make a static prop first and then think about making an animatronic one later because last time I did animatronics, I loved the sculpting part. It was so much fun. But when I got to the animatronics bit, oh my gosh, that was a lot. That was a lot. And, and in fact, I did obviously animatronics in the Dune Thumper that I built and I used what's called um, a, a linear actuator and the linear actuator, what that does is it just kind of basically is a piston that moves out and back. But the speed of that piston is not as fast as the uh, the Dune Thumper. So I had to do some work in post to speed that up when I created the final shot that I did. Um, but yeah, I could probably use a linear actuator to kind of make the second jaw come out. But I think that it's going to be too slow. Uh, 
Mr. Uh, Classical, yes, a Xenomorph head would be a fun build. It would be. I'm definitely going to do it. You know, again, even if people don't want to watch it, <laughs> I don't want to make it. Uh, Nerd is saying, I don't think the link works, but that's the switch. Okay, thank you. So Nerd's trying to put the switch in, into chat. I appreciate it. Uh, Sneed is saying, you want to buy an alien head. You have an alien head for sale? <laughs> that's cool. Uh... Can I do a real proton pack? I wish I could. I'm not sure anyone could do a real proton pack, um, but that would be amazing. If somebody could, um, I think it would be very dangerous <laughs> as well. Uh, Demetrius. Hi, Demetrius. Um, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. So how is it to actually see the firehouse where it all began? Amazing. Going to the firehouse is so cool. And um, I go to the firehouse quite regularly, actually. So certainly over the last couple of months, we go there with the Ecto-1 replica sometimes and hang out there. And that's one of the destinations we always head to when we drive the car through New York City. Um, but I've been there and live streamed and I was there when they made it all look cool for Frozen Empire as well, which was really, really cool. So yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, okay, Alfie's heading off for the night. Good night, Alfie. Have a good sleep. Uh, Mo Phipps is saying, uh, man, those close helmets are brutal. Yeah, we were just talking about printing Star Wars. Helmets, especially if uh, you want them to be approvable for the 501st. Okay, are you in the 501st? That's cool. I've, I've long thought about joining the 501st. It's something that was on my mind when I bought that 3D printer. Um, because it has to be 100% screen accurate. Yeah, that's, uh, whew, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, that would be tough for me. Um, Classico, an, an alien... Uh, and a Mr. Classica, sorry, I keep saying Muck for some reason. It's because I I'm reading it on this tiny text on the screen. Um, an alien head that would uh, need channels for the uh, methacellulose to flow. Yes, it would need that. I mean, that's kind of a must. You've got to, when the mouth opens on the alien, the all of the ugh, has got to come pouring down. That's a must, right? That's Otherwise, it's not an alien head. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, is that a kind of random question, but who is your favorite Ghostbuster of all time? <gasps> it's really hard. Probably Ray Stantz, I think. I like Ray. This is my favorite Ghostbuster. Uh, Sneedler, no, no, Matt. Uh, wanna, oh, you want to pay me to build one? <laughs> that would be something you want to do. Well, you know what? Let me try doing it myself, and then I'll tell you whether I'm ready to sell one. <laughs> Because it might turn out terrible, um, and and I'd need to figure out how long uh, how long it would take me to make it, and then I could tell you if it was something I could do. But uh, let me do it, and then if I think it's something that I I've got time and the ability to do for you, um, uh, I'd obviously have to charge for it. But um, I, but I wouldn't want to charge for something unless I knew that it was going to be good. So that, that so yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. Um, uh, Demetrius, out of all the Ghostbusters movie, which is your favorite? Uh, so I said earlier, Ghostbusters 1 and Afterlife are to my two favorite Ghostbusters movie at the moment, anyway. Um, uh, okay, our Russian friend is leaving, but thank you for joining, appreciate it. Uh, uh, Mo Phipps is saying, I'm in the process of building a Captain Rex armor, but it's currently abandoned, so I don't get frustrated. <laughs> building anything screen accurate is, oh, very, very hard from the measurements to the printing and anything that you print and then paint and then work on, things very rarely turn out completely perfect. So it's a, it's quite a job. Um, so I need to thank you and I appreciate your understanding. That's great. Um, a big brain time saying Ray is so underrated. Uh, glad to hear that someone else likes him as a character. I do. Actually, I thought the character part that he played in the most recent Ghostbusters movie in Frozen Empire was... Uh, by far one of my favorite um, experiences with Ray as a character. So um, I really liked his little side quest with, uh, with Phoebe and podcast. I thought that was pretty awesome. Cool. Well, um, I'm going to probably stay for another five minutes. So if you've got any more questions about building a 3D uh, pack and my experience of doing it, if you've got any other questions about building um, or modding Ghostbusters toys and making them look more realistic, if you want me to talk a little bit more about that, I'm happy to do so. Or if you've got other questions or other things that you want to encourage me to build, which is definitely what's been happening on this 
live. Um, I'm very uh, happy to, to get into that conversation with you guys. And I'll give you a second to answer that because I know what happens is I ask the question and then it takes a while for people to A, hear it because it's always a little bit delayed and B, to answer in chat because <laughs> you've got to type. So I'll just keep riffing while I'm waiting for that to happen. Um, and while I'm doing that, um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to show you. Um, I was going to say, if you want to see the Dune Thumper I made, I'm very happy to bring it out here. It'll take me like 30 seconds to go grab it and bring it out, but I can bring it out and show you guys. Um, let's see, Sneedler. Oh, can you see where the battery is going? Well, so here's the thing. I'm thinking that the battery is probably going to live in here somewhere in the back. And so on the motherboard, I'm going to have to cut a hole like to make an access panel um, so I can so I can put it in there. So I think that's the plan right now uh, for for what? Yeah, for where for where the battery would go in the 3D pack, uh, 3D printed pack, I mean. Um, Dimitris is asking, have you thought about building a Predator head from the Predator movie? Um, I haven't, but now you've said it, I want to do it. <laughs> That would be a really fun sculpt, and um, it would be fun to make it actually articulate, so, you know, that crazy mouth-opening thing would happen. Um, yeah, that would be fun, actually. I had to put that on my list. Uh, there's so many things that I love, actually, the process of sculpting. I really, really enjoy it. Um, but when I was making the dinosaur head, um, I actually sculpted it from foam and then used something called foam clay to cover it. Like I said on my channel, there's a video about that process, actually. I think five kind of 10 minute ish videos on each step of how I built the dinosaur and how I did it. Um, uh, so yeah, um, I need to think about the process because I, I like sculpting in clay too, but then you've got to go through a whole molding process. So there's something quite fun about building it, you know, as the final object. Um, let's see, big brain time. Uh, did you take uh, classics to learn how to build stuff classes, sorry, to build stuff like that, or to just figure it out. I just, to be honest with you, I just figured a lot of it out. I did do art um, at school. Um, part of what I did at school, I did some art. Um, but I just always had an interest in this stuff ever since I was a kid, really. And so I've always just done it. Um, and I think I was saying earlier that sometimes if you really want to make something or possess an object, <laughs> And the only way to possess that object is to make it yourself. That motivates you to learn the skills to do it. And I would say I make lots of mistakes along the way, always. You know, I, I'm far from standing here saying to you, I am an amazing 3D printing making guy. Like, you know, I, I just have a passion for it and I try it and um, I learn kind of as I go. So that's how I, how I approach things. And I just always believe that if you're passionate about something, give it a go, try it. Um... Let's see. Uh, Mo is saying, I have to say that uh, they love Egon. His dry humor is just so amazing and loved his part in Afterlife. Totally agree. Uh, I love Egon as well. And the way that he, his part in Afterlife was fantastic. Stephanie, how long does it take to make it, to make this? Um, so the printing process, well, told you that would happen. As it falls behind me in the background and smashes into a million pieces and totally changes my answer to how long does it take to make? As long as it takes me to reprint it and rebuild it. <laughs> um, the printing takes a while. So when you start 3D printing this, it's a lot of big pieces that then have to be put together. So it does take a while. The printing's one thing and then you have to construct it. So if you look on the back here, um, you'll notice that this is multiple 3D parts. So you see the, these lines here and then the screw points. This is all because this has been, this is actually four printed pieces. So um, it's all screws together. Uh, so that's a, a long process as well. And then you have to sand it and fill it and make it all look right. So that's kind of part of it, I think. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so a while, <laughs> a long while. Uh, Yes, uh, Sneeda's saying it would be cool and a headache of making it with all those moving parts, it would. Uh, Dimitri says, what's your favorite Predator movie? The first one is my favorite Predator movie. Uh, oh, but Sneeda likes Alien vs. Predator. I can understand that. My favorite Predator is still the first one though. I think there's more mystery to that. Um, 
Big Brain Time saying Egon, favourite character right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Classic said, do not throw drop the proton collider. Yeah, I'll try not to, to do what I'm calling a podcast where you hit it with a, a mallet uh, in, the, in the movie. And Stephanie's saying it's cool. Uh, McClassica really enjoyed Alien vs. Predator, the first one at least. Yeah, those Alien vs. Predator movies are in a class of their own, but uh, I, I, I would put them under the class of uh, guilty pleasure, <laughs> those movies, because are they my favourite? No, but do I enjoy watching them? Oh my gosh, yes, I really do. And I think the first Alien vs. Predator, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the one uh, where they go down under the ice to the pyramid thing, right? Is that the one? That is a fun one. I do like that one. It's kind of cool. Yes. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm sure you'll answer in a second because of the de delay. It's always weird. It's like being on this really long satellite broadcast where there's a long... Yes, okay, you've answered. Yes, it's the one with the pyramid. Yeah, I do like that one a lot, actually. It's cool. Well, again... Maybe a few more minutes and then I'm gonna, gonna head out. And again, if you wanna ask me anything more about 3D printing, uh, go ahead and ask. And while I wait for, for you to ask, answer those questions, I'm gonna plug myself and I'm gonna say, hey, subscribe, like. Um, you know, uh, if you enjoy uh, this stream and you're new, please like and subscribe. Um, please, uh, you know, share your love for the channel. There's loads more super content, fun content here for us to talk about. And so I would love you to uh, to do that if you're willing. Uh, Demetrius is saying, the fact that Bill Murray actually is a resident here in Charleston, South Carolina, where I live, but I haven't met him yet. That's got to happen. You're going to have to bump into Bill Murray at some point, right? <laughs> uh, Big Brain Time saying, uh, what printer do I have and how much did it cost? Right. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember the exact model, um, but it was around $150, $160, maybe a little bit more, but it was not a very expensive one. Um, and it's just a very simple one. It's a single extrusion, so it doesn't have multiple things. It's just a very simple open one. You can, of course, buy incredibly cool uh, printers like the Bamboo printer, which I would love to get. But, uh, you know, I did all of this on a very basic printer, so you don't need to spend loads of money, especially if you're starting out. Um, I wouldn't suggest spending loads and loads of money. Like, um, I kind of very much follow the principle um, that Adam Savage follows when he talks about tools. You know, um, don't need to buy an expensive one to begin with, but if you start to use something a lot, then that's the time then to start upgrading and buying something more expensive because you, you start to know and understand what you need. So I think start with something cheap, uh, something that you can understand that you know, get, get used to it and then work your way up to something else when you start to go. Because you may print one thing and go, this is not for me. <laughs> so you would have spent lots of money. So I think, you know, keep it, um, keep it, keep it tight, keep, keep it, put the budget down, start small, uh, and then kind of work your way up would be, would be my advice on that. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, the same question. I wish I could answer, uh, it, I can't remember specifically. Um, yeah, the assembly is a thing too, because when you get the 3D printer, you do have to put it together and you do have to do a bit of configuration. And when I was brand new to the whole 3D printing thing and I'd never done it before, that was a bit of a like, whoa, how do I, how do, I do this? But yeah. Um, uh, Dimitri, so going back to work, enjoy. Thank you for subscribing. I uh, really appreciate it. Sneedler, thank you. Um, Hey, thank you folks for joining. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it's been fun talking about this. I'll definitely do another live stream from the workshop. And probably in the next one, I'll have a specific job that I'm doing, either on the pack or another prop that I'm doing, and we can chat about that process. Um, and it sounds to me like everyone's up for me making the alien head. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna do it. I'll do it. I think the alien movie comes out in a couple of months. So um, I'm gonna finish my proton pack and then I'm gonna move on to, to probably doing that as my next big prop build. I think that'd be fun, a fun thing to do, right? Um, well, thank you folks. Thank you for uh, joining and thanks for, <laughs> thanks for staying big brain time for so long. I really appreciate it. We've had so many great folks on the stream, so many good questions, so many people have tuned in and have joined for a really long time, um, which is really great. I super appreciate it. Um, so thank you for joining. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for your great questions. It helps me 
because if I get questions, I can chat, you know, with you uh, for a long time. And um, yeah, uh, so um, yeah, fantastic. Always, always good chatting with you guys. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button. And if you, if you really like it and you can afford to buy me a hot chocolate, drop a super sticker or something like that, if you, if you want to, you don't have to, but if, you, if you've enjoyed it and you can afford to do that, that helps me to keep making these things. So feel free to do so. And next time uh, we come on the chat, um, we will hopefully be much further progressed with this. What I'd like to do uh, next time we do a, a, a live stream from the workshop, is be connecting up all the cabling and doing the patina and finishing. I think that will be a really good, fun uh, fun thing to be able to do. So, um, I, think that's, I think that's it. Um, the last few people are saying things, they're leaving. Thank you, no problem. See you guys, thank you for joining. I'm gonna sign off now. Thanks so much for joining the stream. And like I said, if you want more of this kind of stuff, even though I'm going off the live stream now, if you subscribe, you'll find plenty of it on the channel. Uh, some great videos for you to watch, some other live streams for you to catch up on. And um, we'll see you again in the next live stream. It will be sometime this week from New York City, from Spook Central, from Dana Bout's apartment. We will see you then.